And once again, if you have your Bibles with you, would you turn to Jude with me? The book of Jude this afternoon. And this afternoon, as we look in the book of Jude, we're just looking at one verse because it has uh, so much uh, in this verse. It mentions so many uh, individuals. And I'd just like us to uh, see how these individuals that are mentioned are yet other examples of apostate teachers, of false teachers who come into the church. And I'd just like us to look at them and compare them together and see how they give us a, a kind of profile of a false teacher. And so if you have your Bibles in Jude, we'll read verse 11 together. The scripture says, Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. And now let's go to our Lord in a word of prayer. Our God, we come to you and we thank you again for all that you've given to us today. Lord, for the fellowship that we've had. Lord, we just ask that you would help us to again understand your word, and uh, Lord, that we might serve you better by it. Lord, we again continue to pray for those who could make it to worship with us this afternoon. Lord, that you'd keep them safe and that you'd return them to us in your time. And Lord, we just ask that you would make us useful to you in the week ahead. It is in Christ's holy name we pray it all. Amen. So again, this very short verse in the book of Jude starts by saying, Woe unto them. Uh, this statement is heaping God's judgment on to the false teachers. The word woe is rendered 99 times in our authorized version, and it always conveys God's judgment. It always conveys uh, that God is heaping judgment, heaping woes onto those that oppose him. In Isaiah 3 and verse 9 it says, The show of their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. It says, woe unto them, grief unto them, sorrows unto them, because they have rewarded evil to themselves. They have brought calamity onto their own souls. And so Jude is continuing to show us that false teachers have judgment stored up for them from the Lord. Just as it uh, said in uh, verse 4 that they were before of old ordained to this condemnation. They have this condemnation, this woe from the Lord uh, that is given to them. They have God's judgment. And so uh, the passage uh, is again just telling us that they have judgment from the Lord and now it's going to continue and it's going to give us some examples from the Old Testament in, in very quick succession uh, about what these false teachers are like. It's going to give us some parallels uh, to them in the Old Testament. It's going to tell us about Cain and Balaam and Korah and all of their sins. So let's look at these in turn. In verse 11 it says, For they have gone in the way of Cain. This is Cain from Genesis chapter 4. Cain who killed his own brother. The first sin that we have recorded uh, that, Cain, that Cain committed was that he did not give God proper honor in worship. In Genesis 3 and verse 5, uh, 4 and verse 3 it says, in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Abel, it says, uh, the, the brother of Cain, both of these the children of Adam and Eve, Abel brought the firstlings of his flock. He brought the fat of his flock, the good of his flock, and offered it as a sacrifice to the Lord. He brought the best that he had to God, but Cain brought, of, brought simply of the fruit of the ground. Uh, he just brought uh, just something, just a token uh, gift to 
the Lord. He didn't bring the best that he had, but rather he just offered, you know, just what he grabbed, just whatever he he brought from his stores, from uh, the harvest of the ground. It was a common offering. It was not the first fruits offering that he was bringing, but rather it was a simple uh, gesture that he was uh, that he was bringing. Not not even not even uh, being uh, wholehearted about it. Just bringing. Uh, just bringing of the fruits of his ground. Unlike his brother Abel, who brought the firstlings, who brought the fat of his flock to the Lord. And so the first sin that we see that Cain commits uh, is that he did not worship God with due honor. He did not elevate God as he should, as he should have brought the first fruits, as he should have brought the best that he had. And so Cain was rejected of the Lord, and he took out his anger on his brother. In Genesis 4, verse 8, it says, And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. There's a couple of things that happen here. First, when he was rejected by the Lord, when when his works that he brought before God were judged rightly to to, to not be enough, to not be sufficient uh, for uh, for himself uh, for his. Uh, offering that, that they were not the best that he could bring. The Lord rejected him, and we see that he took it out on his brother, uh, who was in the right before God, who, who it was worshiping God uh, purely, bringing due honor to his name. He took it out on him, and he hated uh, the, the genuine worshiper of God, even in his own household. And then we see that he is rejected by the Lord. It says that he was cursed from the earth. Cursed to to walk away from uh, the people of God. The end of his conversation, the judgment of God towards him, was that he was driven out from among men. He was driven out, as it were, from the primitive church, from the household of Adam, to go and wander the wilderness. In Genesis 4 and verse 13 it says, And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that every one that findeth me shall slay me. So his way, as it says, they have gone in the way of Cain, was that it begins with half-hearted worship towards God, with not bringing him what is due to his name, not worshiping in the symbol of Christ Jesus, which is what Abel did. He brought of the firstlings of his flock. He brought a blood sacrifice to the Lord. He brought the best of what he had. And so in a symbol, he worshiped in Christ Jesus. But Cain, when he came, he brought just whatever he had on hand. He just, he, just, he just brought whatever was easiest for him to go and get and give to the Lord. And the end of his way is to be cast out from before the presence of the Lord, to be cast out from the primitive church into the wilderness to go out and wander. And this is how false teachers also fall. They have gone in the way of Cain, and we'll talk about this in a few moments. Next it says, they have ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward. The sin of Balaam here was that of disobeying the voice of the Lord. He had been called by the king of Moab to curse Israel. We, we all likely know the story of, uh, of Balaam. In Numbers 22 and verse 5 it says, this is speaking of the the king of Moab. It says, He sent messengers therefore unto Balaam, the son of Baor, uh, to Pethor, 
which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover, their, uh, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. He's, he says, Here come the children of Israel. They're in the wilderness, and they dwell in my land. And it says, Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me. Peradventure I shall prevail, that we may smite them, that I may drive them out of the land. For I wot that he whom thou blessest is blessed, and he whom thou cursest is cursed. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand, and they came unto Balaam and spake unto him the words of Balak. So Balak, king of, uh, of, uh, of Moab, he sent the elders of his people to go and uh, bring the reward of divination, the reward to curse the people of Israel to Balaam because he had a power to bless whom he will and they would be blessed and to curse whom he will and they would be cursed. And he wanted them to curse the children of Israel. And so he saw it, that is, uh, and so Balaam, when he received this emissary from Moab, he sought counsel from the Lord about what he should do with them. In Numbers 22, verse 20, it says, And God came unto Balaam at night and said unto him, If the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say unto thee, that shalt thou do. The, the people had already come. They had asked him to go up and curse the people. And when he sought twice the Lord's counsel, the Lord said, If the men come to you, if they come and ask you a third time, then go up with them. Otherwise, uh, uh, otherwise do not go. Uh, and uh, if you go up, speak the word that I will give you to speak. He had been told to wait for them to approach him again before going up. And this is where his sin comes in. Uh, he, he had thus far been faultless. He had thus far uh, done no sin against the Lord in hearing out the Moabites. But Balaam, it says, was hasty to go and curse the children of Israel for the reward of divination. He ran greedily after the reward that they had in their hand. He took the initiative to go and curse Israel before the emissaries had come and asked a third time. As it says in Numbers 22, verse 21, And Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass and went and the princes of Moab. And God's anger was kindled because he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. It says nothing about them coming a third time to ask of him. And so he went up and tried to, cur and to curse the children of Israel. Now we know the rest of the story, how the Lord withstood him in the way, and how, uh, how he did not perceive the Lord, but his beast saw and tried to deliver him out of the Lord's hand, uh, and the Lord caused his beast to speak to him and reproved him for his sin. And ultimately, we know how Balaam was caused to bless the, the children of Israel instead of cursing. But our passage here in Jude tells us about his sin, that he ran greedily after his error. He ran after the reward of divination and did not hearken to the voice of the Lord. To, to, to wait for them to come and ask a third time. That's the point, is that he ran greedily after this error. And so too, false teachers run after filthy lucre. In 2 Peter 2, verse 3, Through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. If they think that they can make a little bit of money by doing evil, even evil against the people of God, they will not hesitate to do it. They will run greedily after that, after that reward. How many wicked books, how many podcasts which contain heresy have been produced and sold by false teachers? How much money has been made on TBN under the guise of biblical teaching, but 
really just peddling what men and women want to hear by their sinful hearts, the tickling of the ear. Uh, all false teachers, all apostate teachers, run greedily after the error of Balaam for reward. In verse 11 it says, They have also perished in the gainsaying of Korah. Korah was the head of a household in Levi in the days of Moses. In fact, he was, he was a relative of Moses. And his house served the tabernacle. They, they served about some of the provision of the tabernacle. And, and uh, later they serve, uh, his descendants served the worship of the tabernacle, leading the children of Israel in worship. But Korah and his household, while he was still alive, wanted more authority in Israel. And so they spoke out against Moses. They, they slandered Moses. They, they, uh, they um, questioned the character of Moses in order to get more authority in Israel. In Numbers 16 and verse 1 it says, Now Korah, the son of Ishar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abiram, and uh, the sons of Eliab and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men, and they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown, and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron, and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore then, lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. So they went to Moses, and they went to, to, they went to Aaron, and they said, you know, look at all this congregation. Look at how, uh, how many great men we brought before you. Are not all of the congregation of the Lord holy? And why are you, lift, they said to Moses, why are you lifting yourself up above, the, uh, above the, the, the people of Israel? Why have you made yourselves the leaders of Israel? Uh, this they did despite God's calling of Moses and Aaron. His appointment of them to be symbols of Christ in the, uh, in the, the congregation of Israel. That is, that they were gainsaying in Israel. Uh, Korah uh, wanted again he wanted authority uh, he, he just came up against Moses in order to, to tear down his character and to in, advance himself in Israel he wanted a bigger position in Israel and for this blasphemy against the Lord the Lord destroyed him and all those who sinned with him when they went up against Moses when they opposed themselves to Aaron, it says that the Lord judged them according to their wickedness. In Numbers 16, 28, it says, And Moses said, Whereby ye shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of mine own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up, with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quickly into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their houses, and all the men that appertained unto Korah, and all their goods. They, and all that appertained to them, went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. So this sign was given from the Lord. He says, if these men die a common death, if they die a death which all men die, then the Lord has not sent me. But, if the Lord judge them in a miraculous way, if, if, the, if the Lord cause a new thing, if the earth open its mouth and they, uh, and they fall in and are, are, are buried suddenly, then it says the Lord has sent me rather than them. 
And so we see again that the sons of Korah, these false teachers, these false prophets among Israel are an example of the vain ambition of false teachers and of their judgment to come. As false teachers, they love to have preeminence among God's people and stand above them. In Matthew 23, 5, it says, But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. Uh, Christ was, uh, was speaking against the Pharisees and he says they love all of these things to be called great among Israel, to, to, to have the preeminence wherever they go. And so these are, this is a pattern of false teachers. They're self promoting. And as false teachers, they have their end. God himself will judge them. Just as just as uh, Korah and his household were judged miraculously by the hand of God, so will they be judged by his hand. As it says in our passage, they perished in the gainsaying of Korah. Uh, God's judgment is brought against them. And so believers, let's just bring all of that we've seen from these examples together and draw out the similarities between them. Let's make a profile of a false teacher. First, we see that a false teacher departs from the worship of God into the wilderness. Like Cain, who was driven from men because he would rather kill his brother than give the first fruits, the first signs of apostasy can be seen in corporate worship. They do not worship from the heart. They do not worship rightly. They would rather promote themselves rather than, than, than bring to God his due from them. Uh, as it says in, in verse 12, which, which just follows on this, and we'll talk more about it later, these are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you feeding themselves without fear. That's a reference to the Lord's table. When they come to the, the church of God, when, when we gather together in our feast of charity, our feast of love for one another and Christ, it says that they are self-promoting. That, 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 that when they feast with you, they feed themselves without fear. Uh, again, it's, it's a chance to, 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 to promote themselves, to, to, to not give God his proper glory. Um, uh, again, often apostasy uh, is first publicly recognized in the corporate worship of the church. Uh, among God's people, when they gather together with us, you can see the first signs of apostasy of leaving. And this is why church discipline is so important. When we see those kinds of things in the corporate worship of the church, uh, we ought to we ought to. Uh, go to them and speak to them and, and, and try to, to encourage them to, to come back to the right way, to, to change their attitudes about these things. And then if they will not, uh, then to put them out. Uh, as it says in 1 Corinthians eleven nineteen. For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. When ye come together therefore into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper says that we must recognize heresies. We must recognize uh, those, uh, those divisions which come uh, in the church. And so uh, church discipline is uh, very important, uh, that they which are approved may be made manifest. Also, they have a desire or a motivation for greed. They have uh, the greed of filthy lucre. They, they run after the error of Balaam for reward. And they love to have authority and status in the church. Just as all three examples that we looked at, all of them were self-seeking. And they had a hatred for God's people as well. Having left the right ways, a heretic will self-promote for money. Uh, and because they hate the church, because they, they have left Christ Jesus and hate him, they will even seek a position in the church where they can do the most harm to a church. 
a, a, a heretic, a false teacher, uh, we, we shouldn't say that a false teacher seeks position in the church because they love the church. That, that's absolutely not the case. A false teacher loves to self-promote, loves the status that, that he can have as a teacher or a pastor in a church so that he can do the most damage to the church and get the most benefit from it himself. In Matthew 23 and verse 6, it says, They love the utter, uppermost rooms at feasts, in the chief seats, in the synagogues, and greetings in the markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. Again, they like to be, they like to be above the people. They like to, 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 to be uh, seen as a class all to their own so that they can then do damage in the church and get, uh, get some reward out of it. Finally, we see their destination is to be destroyed. Just as Korah was swallowed up by the earth, uh, just as Cain was thrust out and cursed from the church, uh, just as uh, just as Balaam was was uh, was I think ultimately reproved by the Lord, and because even after he had been caused to bless the children of Israel, he gave counsel to uh, the king of Moab about what he should do about the children of Israel, that they would be destroyed uh, because they are unrepentant. God will punish them Himself. In 2 Peter 2, 1, it says, But there were false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. They will have swift destruction. God is not mocked. That which a man sows, he shall also reap. And since they have sown destruction since they have sown hatred and malice towards God's people they will reap it for themselves at the hand of God and so believers I pray that the Lord would help us to see what a false teacher is and see just how dangerous a false teacher is I pray that the Lord would help us to avoid uh, these kinds of things these uh, these um, these men that creep in to the church and this can help us to identify their character, uh, to show us that they are like Cain and Balaam and Korah. And now if there's an unbeliever here, you are also worthy of the destruction that we've talked about. You are worthy that God should judge your soul. You are worthy that this moment God should open up the earth under this building and swallow you whole. Because you have sinned against the God of heaven. Ezekiel 18, 4 says, Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. You are worthy of death. You belong to the Lord, and yet you have sinned against him. And so the Lord might as well destroy sinners like us. And therefore, your only escape is to trust in Christ, in the mercies of God. We're not worthy that Christ should once suffer for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. We're not worthy that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And yet God has stretched this forth to us, he sent Jesus Christ into the world to die for the sins of his people so that again, all who believe on him would not be condemned but have everlasting life. And so I pray that you would trust in the Lord Jesus and be saved. And again, believers, I ask that we would uh, remember these things in the days ahead, that we would remember to uh, examine those who uh, come into the pulpit, into the teaching lecture, uh, lectern, that we would keep watch on our own souls and the souls of those around us. Uh, because, again, uh, the Lord is a just God. The Lord is the one who brings that swift destruction upon those who sin against him. And it's only by faith in Christ that we can be delivered. And I pray that the Lord would help us to watch for each other 
that we would all look to Christ uh, genuinely for salvation. Let's go to our Lord in a word of prayer together. Our God, again, we thank you for all that you've given to us today. Lord, all of the, the, the wisdom that we've read in your word, Lord, we pray that you would help us to remember that wisdom. Lord, that you'd help us to see uh, the uh, wiles of the devil and the wiles of his false teachers. Lord, that you would help us to see the vanity of their way. Lord, to heed the warnings against their destruction. Uh, Lord, that we would preach the gospel to them and call them to faith in Christ. Lord, we ask that you would give us a compassion even for them. Lord, that while they are alive, as the scripture says, a living dog is better than a dead lion. That for the living, there is hope, Lord. And we pray that you'd help us to lay hold of that hope. And Lord, preach the right gospel in Jesus to them, that even they may be forgiven of their sins. Lord, we ask that you would give us wisdom this week to do just that if we meet any who are caught in a false way. Lord, we ask that you would be with those who couldn't make it to worship with us, and that you would teach them the same that you've taught us today. Lord, we just ask that in all things we would all be found to your honor and glory. And it's in Christ's holy name we pray. Amen.